Hello and welcome to Dharma Talk Tuesday. You might notice something is different. Can you tell? Can you tell? My hands are free. I recently just got a new tripod lighting situation and I'm really excited about it because now it's like we're actually sitting and talking and you can see me and my hand doesn't get sore and it's a great situation. So yay for that. I am just so excited to see you hopping on. Chanel, how are you? I'm gonna wave at you, hello. <laughs> so as you're joining, as usual, please say where you're tuning in from. I love that individuals tune in from literally all over the world in these Facebook Lives, in Dharma Talk Tuesday. We're, we're, we're tuning in from all over the world, so please say where you're tuning in from. I'm really excited about today's topic ladies, because um, I think it's one of our jobs as leaders to bring conversation topics to the forefront that are like taboo or that make people feel uncomfortable or that people feel unwilling to talk about in like normal land. I feel like I live in bubble world and then there's normal world. <laughs> and I wanna bring more people into bubble world because the truth is it's a place of empowerment, it's a place of transparency, authenticity, truth, God, and possibility. Who doesn't want that? Like hearts and likes if you wanna be a part of that world. So for the purposes of bringing people into that world, I'm committed to talking about things that honestly, a lot of people are really uncomfortable. And it's funny, I was having a conversation with a woman from my hometown, St. Louis, and we were talking about how, um, especially in the Midwest, there is still so much taboo around a lot of, a lot of things around personal development, uh, uh, like, uh, like, like sexuality, spirituality, politics, money. Like you just don't go there with people. Like you just don't. And I'm here to bust through that mold right now because we're gonna talk about all of it here. We're not gonna talk about all of it here because that would take forever. We're gonna talk about one thing in particular. So I'm super excited to see those of you that are joining. Please say where you're tuning in from. Yay, we've got Georgia, Austin, Chanel, Giselle, Shawnee, Tabitha in Florida. Hello, Shell Beach, California. All right, cool. So the topic I wanna to talk to you about today is money. Hearts and likes, if you're excited to talk about money, if you're excited to talk about this topic. It's so funny, I was speaking with one of my mentors yesterday and he was like, Julie, tell me about Money Alignment Yoga Academy. And I'm like, well, we manifest money. I teach them yoga, they learn how to connect with their body wisdom, and they also get strategy. And he's like, hold on, so how does the money fit into this? And I explained it to him, and he's like, you need to talk about that more. And I was like, you know what, you're right. You're absolutely right, I do. So I wanna lead with that today, and I wanna talk about money, I wanna talk about the manifesting, and what, like, why some people find themselves on this ridiculous and frustrating roller coaster of money manifesting. Like, why does that happen to some people? Why do some people just seem like they're cruising, they're happy, they're like, they're rolling in it. Like, and then there's some people who are struggling always, and then there's some people who are on the roller coaster. I was the one who was on the roller coaster for a long time, so I really get that one. I mean, I've been at both ends, but unfortunately I hang out more in this end now, but I've been on the roller coaster, and I know how frustrating and demoralizing it really is. And so, um, I'm just gonna move the comments to the side for just a second. Okay, so did you guys know that if you swipe the comments to the side, then they go away for a minute? Isn't that cool? Sometimes they're really distracting and I, wanna, I have a lot of points here to cover. So I'm gonna come back to them in just a minute, okay? So I specifically wanna talk today about money declarations. So if you have a money declaration, throw me some hearts and likes. I wanna know who on here has some money declarations. And by money declarations, I mean a specific amount of money you are committed to and excited about making every single month, like a monthly revenue goal, an annual revenue goal, like a specific amount of money that you are generating or you're committed to generating every month, a declaration. A declaration is something that you declare and then deliver on. So hearts and likes, if you are somebody who has, yes, I see those hearts and likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect. 
So here's the thing, a lot of women, even entrepreneurs, as crazy as this sounds, are afraid, they're unwilling to declare a money declaration. Like they're unwilling or they don't want to declare a money declaration goal for their business, which honestly sounds a little bit crazy because the whole point of entrepreneurship is to make money, isn't it? I mean, unless you're running a nonprofit, but even, gosh, anyone in Southern California it is so hot, right? Anyway, if um, you are running a nonprofit, it's not as much a concern for me, but, but you still need to make money. You still do fundraising and stuff. But if you're an entrepreneur, like you need to have money goals. You really do because you're not gonna be in business for very long if you don't. And so it's really shocking to me how many women I speak to and get on the phone with and I'm emailing with and they don't really have like a revenue goal. And the reason why they don't have a revenue goal is what I'm gonna talk about today and then how to start to clear some of these blocks. Um, hearts and likes if you're an entrepreneur. Throw me some, actually, it, rather than hearts and likes, although I love my hearts and likes, throw a one in the comments thread if you're watching and you're an entrepreneur. Throw a one in the comments thread if you're, a, if you're watching and you're an entrepreneur. Um, also, if you know anyone who could benefit from this conversation, who is an entrepreneur and who is, um, who you think would benefit from having just like a really honest, straightforward conversation about money, please hit the share button on your profile and share this. Um, comment and tag them in the comments thread below. And let's get the word out about this because I really believe that if we can shift the general consciousness of Dharma Talk Tuesday chair, money on this planet, we're gonna live in a very different planet. And yeah, this is a big part of the Dharma conversation. So share this if you would be willing. Thank you. And I see a lot of ones coming in. I see a lot of ones coming in. Got lots of entrepreneurs up in here. Awesome. So you don't have to declare your money goal, but on a piece of paper, write it, I mean, you do need to declare it, but not publicly. Write it down. Sometimes this chair is really hard to get comfortable in, you guys. It's a struggle. Um, so write down your monthly revenue goal. And if you find it difficult to write down your monthly revenue goal right now, notice that. That's the thing that you need to notice. If you know your monthly revenue goal and you're clear about it and you don't have a block around it, awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. If you, if you know what you want to make for your monthly revenue goal, but you, you don't know how to get there, that's fine. It's still a declaration. Sometimes we don't know the how for a declaration, but that's okay. So whoever you are, wherever you are, write down, Chanel, beautiful, 5,000 a month. That's what my first money monthly revenue goal was too. So write it down wherever you are on a piece of paper. Now, as you are looking at your monthly revenue goal, I want you to notice what comes up when you look at it. This should be a goal that is stretchy, but also attainable. So like for me, when I first declared 5,000 a month, just like you declared, Chanel, it was super stretchy for me. I had never made that kind of money before, but I also knew I could do it. I also felt like a lot of possibility around it. So like for me, if I would have first declared like 20,000 a month for my um, initial revenue goal, that would have felt unattainable to me. Like that's very doable to me now, but that would have felt very unattainable to me then. So like no, no need to write something that feels unattainable, write something that feels stretchy, but attainable. Now notice your inner dialogue about it. Notice what your thoughts and feelings are about it. Does it feel like, are, are you unwilling to declare it? Are you um, concerned with the how? Are you feeling a lot of pressure? Like, oh, this feels like a lot of pressure. Like if I, if I actually declare this, like I had a client who was afraid, like she knew all the steps, but she was actually afraid to declare and then move forward to create the action that would create those results because she felt like it was a lot of responsibility. So I'm gonna talk for the rest of this Dharma Talk Tuesday about the five, count them five blocks that cause people to either not declare their revenue goal or declare it and then sabotage and not actually fulfill and follow through. So the important thing for you to know, every single one of you here, is that whatever you're declaring is completely possible for you. I mean, manifestation is real. When you think about 
what you want to experience in this world and create and declare, like you are actually, a, that thought is attracting the experience in the physical realm. It really is. And so if you're not experiencing that reality in, in your life, it's because there's something blocking it. And so we're gonna talk about those blocks today so that those declarations will actually happen for you. Who's excited? Hearts and likes. Yes! Okay, so we're gonna get through this and it's not gonna take 45 minutes like it usually does, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so the first one. The first block that I see in people is that they're afraid to declare. And the reason why they're afraid to declare is because they have a fear, like, what if I don't hit it? So this is the first block. They're afraid to actually declare. So Giselle and Chanel just bravely all wrote in the comment thread what they're declaring, 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month. That's what they are declaring. A lot of times we are afraid to declare something because we're afraid that we're not gonna hit it. And so like the perfectionist uh, in us, like raise your hand if you're a perfectionist, that was definitely me for a long time. The perfectionist in us, the, the woman who likes to look good, who likes to be perfect, who likes to win, who likes to be in first place. We resist big declarations because I, if, if I don't know for sure that I can hit it, I don't want to declare it like my word is on the line my integrity is on the line what if it doesn't happen and so what happens when you don't declare is that you literally are giving nothing for the universe to work with and so yes declarations are risky yes declarations are risky entrepreneurship is risky so one of the things that you need to get acquainted with first as an entrepreneur is how you deal with risk. I mean, this is true of life in general. I mean, love is one of the riskiest things that you can do, truly, but it's very vulnerable and worth it and beautiful, obviously. But if you're an entrepreneur, there's like another level of risk that you deal with. And if you are very risk averse, that may have served you up until this point, but you won't make it very far as an entrepreneur because you need to be willing to go all in with something. I'll give you an example. Um, a recent webinar that I did called Consistent High Level Money Manifesting, I had been working on for like three and a half months and I was totally procrastinating on it, you guys. I was like tweaking it and fixing it and perfectionizing it and I was like, I was excited about it, but I was also like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. And so my belief was like kind of in and out. Finally, I just got to a point where I was like, oh, this is not done, I just need to put it out there. Like I need to get this thing off my task list and just put it out there. And it was so successful, you guys. <laughs> it did so well. I don't have the final numbers right now, but I mean, it, it did at least, gosh, I think we brought in like 30 or 40,000 from it. For me, I mean, that's, it's all relative. Like for some people that's like shitty, but for me, that was great. I mean, I thought that was like a really good, like for an hour and a half of my time, like that was pretty decent, you know what I mean? And so it's so interesting how we block ourselves from success and from the manifesting and from people out there who are wanting to raise their hand and say, hey, I want you to help me. I wanna say yes to your services. I wanna say yes to your offer. Like Giselle, you and I were talking about this the other day. I was like, how many times are you a blessing to people? How many times do you give people a chance to say yes to you? How many offers are you making a day? Like that's a question every single one of you should be asking. And so if you're in a place where you're unwilling to like declare and put it out there and risk, then it's gonna be really hard. I have to sneeze, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. For the universe to provide to you. And it all starts with a declaration. It all starts with a declaration. So you need to be willing to like risk, be willing to fail, be willing to fall on your face, be willing to look bad. That doesn't mean you will. It's just like a willingness to. There's a difference, right? Two, the second block. Did that first one resonate with you? Hearts and likes if that resonated with you. Thank you, Giselle. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you, ladies. Hearts and likes if that resonated with you. The first one is, can someone put this in the comment box? The first block is afraid to declare. Okay, thank you for the hearts and likes. The second block is that this seems impossible. It's like, I, I, I would love to declare, but this feels impossible. Like, how is this gonna happen? How am I gonna get there? And so there's 
um, a block in needing the details. And again, the details are what probably, like being detail focused in your life has probably gotten you really, excuse me, far. It's probably gotten you to where you are now, which maybe is working for you. But again, this is about getting to the next level. This is about hitting your next level of declaration. So like Chanel, when I hit my $5,000 a month, which I didn't actually, I was so like in the flow and in the energy and in the action, I blew past that 5,000. I didn't even know that I did it until I looked back and was talking to my accountant and I was looking, I was looking at my numbers and I blew past it and was like, I didn't even know that that happened. Like I was so just like in the flow, which is amazing. You know what I mean? And so it's like, When you're willing to be in the flow, and notice I'm using the word willing a lot. There's a lot of willingness because it's not like it's not like this stuff is hard. It's not like you can't do it. It's just being willing to do it. It's honestly simple, and that's just a choice, which should be really exciting for you. Like that should be feel empowering and inspirational for you. Okay. So when you are willing to just be in that flow, and yes, the details are important. But so often I find that people are so caught up in the details and in like needing a guarantee and in needing specifics on the how that they don't even get started. I had no idea that my company would look the way that it does right now, that I'd be teaching business in a course called Maya, Money Alignment Yoga Academy. I had no idea that I would be hosting massive live retreats. I didn't know that that's what was in the cards for me. I just knew that I liked teaching yoga and then I knew that people learned a lot from practicing with me and that they get, got a lot of wisdom and that it led to money manifesting when they practiced with me. That was all I knew. And so I was working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Like, like I didn't know that there was this big vision available to me. And there's a whole other vision available to me. There's a whole other vision available to you. But it takes being willing to be in that flow and trusting the signs, trusting the opportunities. If a coach comes, if you book a call with a coach and they have an offer that feels resonant for you and you're like, yes, this program, these steps feel very resonant, like this is gonna support me, you need to be a yes to that. Like when I first signed up for my first coaching program, for example, it was way out of my budget. It made no logical sense for me to sign up. And thank God I did because it was 50% of my income put it all on a credit card because I didn't, I mean, and I made the money back so fast. My business grew so fast. And there's no way I would have my Dharma Talk Tuesday chair and my awesome dog, wherever he is, and my awesome boyfriend who's downstairs, he just got home, and this really amazing house on the beach if I hadn't been willing to take that risk, which meant being unattached and trusting of the how that it would arrive to me, that I would be able to notice the sign when it arrived and go for it. So it's like being able to trust yourself and going for it, trusting the people around you, trusting the trusting God to give you that, that, that he's taking care of you, giving you the right steps and that you can trust yourself in discerning what those steps are and in discerning what, what the right path is and what the distraction path is. And that's like a self discernment thing. Okay, so that's the second thing. Um, seems impossible. Oh my gosh, I'm only on the second thing. Okay, here we go. <laughs> on the third thing. The third block, okay? The third money block is isolation. Number three, Chandra, I think you're typing them in the comment thread for me. Thank you so much for doing that. The third block is isolation. And the reason why this is a big one is because I hear this a lot, especially from the ladies who sign up for Maya. They'll say things like, I wanna do this, but I'm afraid to outpace or outgrow my husband or my family or my friends. In fact, I was speaking with a woman earlier today and she was like, did you ever experience like having to let go of certain friendships when you, grew, when you like, not grew bigger, but like transformed and shifted in your journey? And I was like, actually, yeah, and it sucked. And there were times I'll never forget, like when I had my first six figure month, I, you guys, I felt so alone. I'm not gonna lie. Like I felt so alone. I felt like, I mean, it was exciting that I hit six figures, but 
it was also kind of depressing that I was all by myself, but that was kind of also just part of the journey. You know, that was actually a beautiful moment because that's when I realized, oh, I want a relationship. I didn't realize at that point, like I wanted a man to celebrate these moments with. Like the other day, um, or a few weeks ago, Matt had a big celebration in his business and we went to a nice steakhouse together to celebrate. Like now I have someone to celebrate those moments with. But if it weren't for that moment of isolation, it was actually a blessing. It was actually a beautiful thing that I, that I felt that kind of pain. So the answer is yes, you might feel isolation. Yes, you might feel loneliness. Yes, that phrase that's lonely at the top is true at times. But look, you can also turn it into a growth moment, a growing opportunity. And if you're part of a community that is growing together, like my Mayans, my beautiful Mayan mastermind, they're growing together, they're taking care of each other, those are lifelong friendships that get formed, then you always have someone to grow with. I remember I was um, first starting my business and it was really hard. Like my family didn't believe in me. My boyfriend who had just broken up with me at the time didn't believe in me. It was like me all by myself. And I was the only one who believed in me. And that was when I had just joined my very first mastermind, my first business coaching program, the one that I couldn't afford that I was just telling you about. But I'll tell you what, you guys, that program, like those women are, even though they were all over the world, we became such close friends. And when I came into San Diego for our first mastermind, we were like family. And I turned to them when I felt alone and when I felt like I needed support and they were like they were like the family that I had been looking for it was incredible and that isolation that fear of outgrowing people around me no longer became a fear it just wasn't a part of my consciousness anymore because I aligned myself with the right people in the right community okay so like if you're trying to do this entrepreneurship thing all by yourself that's not recommend. Like, I don't recommend that because yes, there there are going to be times when you feel alone. Like it's like it's a bit of a different journey, but there's plenty of people out there who get it, who get you, and I highly recommend that you put yourself in an environment of other women, ideally like in person, but if not virtually, <laughs> that also understand what that journey is like and that want to like be in that growth with you. You know, other people that are in that growth with you. So isolation. That's block number three. Block number four is responsibility. Wah, wah. <laughs> I know, I'm mentoring a leadership group right now and the trainer was like, what do you guys think of when you hear responsibility? And I loved how honest they were. They were like, I mean, it was like one thing after another, like, oh, like authority, like, um, like I wanna rebel, like that feels heavy, I feel trapped, like, whoa! Like I didn't realize so many people had so many blocks around responsibility. But then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, this is, I could totally see this. In fact, there was, like I was saying before, there's a woman who um, I was working with in Maya in the previous wave, who is amazing, she's beautiful, she has so much potential and she, you know, she was like, I really believed in her. And she kept like going for it and then blocking herself and then going for it. And I was like, what are you doing? Why do you keep blocking yourself? And she was fully aware she was blocking herself and she was like, because it just feels like so much responsibility to have a business. I'm like, yeah, it is, <laughs> it totally is. But it's like, it's like being, again, willing. It's that word, willing. Being willing to, to have that responsibility. And I think one of the blocks that she was experiencing was like, what if I can't fulfill properly on the promises to my clients? Or what if they won't get the results that I'm promising? Or what if I can't somehow deliver? It's an, in other words, it's a not enoughness conversation. And I totally get it. And what it really comes down to, you guys, is trust. So like when I realized that most of the things that come out of my mouth when I'm coaching are not mine, that it's just pretty much God talking through me, it was like, oh, well, I guess I can't take credit for that one. I don't know if it was good or if it was bad, but it wasn't me. <laughs> and I'm laughing, but it's kind of serious. Like when you realize, or rather, let me put it this way, when you become an open channel, unattached, to your communication, to your vision, to your message, to your dharma, and you just let God move through you, it is so freeing. Like, well, not only is it freeing, but it's effective. Like, I, what I find is that I end up hearing from my clients things like, how, like, you were just speaking into exactly what I needed to hear. Or how did you, like, I felt like you were talking just to me. 
You guys, I hear this all the time, and it's because I'm in that flow, and I'm no different from you. Like, this is available to you too. This is available for every single human. I'm just willing to fall on my face and look stupid and like not, and be at a loss for words, and it never happens. Let me just say it. And it never happens, but I'm willing to. It's like I'm willing to. So again, it comes down to willingness. Like, are you willing to just be that open of a channel and that unattached and that trusting of God and of yourself to deliver whatever your message is? So, um, yes, running a business requires responsibility, but like, so does pretty much everything in life. If you want to be an adult, <laughs> if you want to have like an adult human life, like there's responsibilities. And my point of view is like, yes, it takes um, responsibility and ownership to be a successful entrepreneur, but like, what, what else, like, why would you do anything else? Like, I would so much rather have the responsibilities that I have in my business than the ones that I had in corporate or the ones that I had in academia. Cause let's be honest, there's responsibilities in every single one of those departments. And I'd so much rather have, you know, like I'm switching to an S corp right now. Like I'd so much rather have that responsibility than, um, like what I was doing before in my agency job in New York city. Like I, any day, any day. Right? So hearts and likes if that resonates with you. Hearts and likes, hearts and likes. And here we are, we're at the fifth block. The fifth block that stops people from declaring their money goals and declarations, <sighs> unworthiness. And this is one of the biggest ones that I see. It's that question of who am I to make $5,000 a month? Who am I to make $10,000 a month? Who am I to make a hundred thousand dollars a month and it's like that Marianne Williamson quote who are you not to be successful and fabulous and beautiful and the brightest light on the block like who are you not to and so I, I definitely went through this obstacle or this block um, but myself like I dealt with this block for sure myself and it, it manifests differently for different people like sometimes it manifests as comparison and it's like you compare yourself with someone else and you're like, why am I not further along? Why don't I have what she has? Like she seems so clear and confident and convicted in her message. Like what's wrong with me that I can't deliver a message like that? So it's like comparison. And I love the phrase to compare is to despair. So that's, I mean, that's a big one for unworthiness. Another is the self-sabotage thing, which kind of goes back into the energy set point um, training that I did before, which is like your thermostat that you do. So if you're, if you're at a certain set point, it means like you can manifest more money, but then you'll manifest a car accident to bring you back down to that level of money. Or you'll dip down to like below, but then you'll manifest like a new client. It's like, yay, I'm back up. But then you, you, you basically, you, it's like a two steps forward, three steps back. It's like one of these things. And so you find yourself at this consistent uh, thermostat energy set point. And again, that's an unworthiness thing because there's something in you that feels like you're just not worthy to manifest more. Okay, so those are the five blocks. The five blocks, I have my notes here. The five blocks are afraid to declare because what if I don't hit the number? And then like, what does that say about me? It's like a break in integrity that's, I'll look bad. I'm like gonna be a failure. The second is it seems impossible. It's like needing to know the how. The third is isolation, which is like I'm afraid I'm gonna outpace the people around me. The fourth is responsibility. How do I manage all this cash? How do I fulfill on the, the, with the clients? And the fifth is unworthiness. So at the end of the day, what I wanna say is, the thing that has most gotten me through these blocks and that helps my clients most get through these blocks is the yoga practice. It truly is the yoga practice. And it's the, um, actually it's two things. It's the yoga practice and then the emotional cultivation that we do. So the yoga practice gets you out of your head and into your body because your head is what's coming up with all the stories that are perpetuating your unworthiness stories, your isolation stories, your afraid to declare stories, all of that. So if you're out of your head and into your body, you're getting out of the lies and into truth. Who doesn't want to be in truth? Hearts and likes if you want some truth. And it lives in your body, okay? So it lives in your body wisdom. Like that's really where you're creating space for God's message to speak to you and to be able to hear God's message. So that's the first step is your yoga practice. The second is emotional cultivation. And this is like, you know, if you're, if you're doing all the right things, like if you have great strategy, but you have a mindset of waiting for the next shoe to drop, 
you are going to manifest the next shoe dropping. If you're doing your yoga practice every single day, but you have a mindset of nobody wants to hear my voice or my message, so you're not making any offers, you're not gonna make any money. And so you need to have all three things in balance. And the three things are your yoga practice every day, a really healthy emotional cultivation practice, and then the third thing is your, what I call avenues of abundance. And in the recent webinar I did, I called that being a blessing to at least five people a day, making an offer of some kind to at least five people a day. So the thing that I find people get most hung up on in this conversation is not yoga, it's not avenues of abundance, it's actually emotional cultivation. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> they're like, hearts and likes, and you're like, what the hell is emotional cultivation? So, I wanna just tell you and give you a heads up because you're my Dharma Live loyals. Um, I'm doing a special little something something about emotional cultivation. It's gonna be a little course. And I've never done anything like it before. Um, I don't know of any other course like it. Um, I don't have a timeline for you yet, but I'm very excited about it. Um, I'll have more details for you soon. Literally, God gave me the idea just this week, and it just is so, oh, Chandra, thank you, the three pillars. She's my, um, she's my girl right now. Thank you, Chandra. So, the thing is when you master emotional cultivation, the other two are so easy. If you can just do a yoga practice every morning, and um, if you need support with that, I do have my seven day chakra opening yoga challenge. It's just 15 minutes a day for the different chakras. And then you can go and be a blessing to other people and literally just like be somebody who looks up and talks to people and is committed to making a difference for people. And you're, and, and you're attracting the right opportunities with your right inner dialogue things just fall into place. And that's where you truly become a manifesting queen. You become a Dharma queen and you get to sit in the Dharma Talk Tuesday chair and talk to your amazing, beautiful audience about your point of view, about whatever you're doing in your beautiful path of Dharma. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this. Um, hearts and likes if you are too. Hearts and likes if you are too. And that brings us to the end of this Dharma Talk Tuesday. So I will post a link to the seven day chakra opening yoga challenge. If you're like, wait, I need help practicing yoga. I'll post that link here. And stay tuned for the emotional cultivation course. It's not gonna be called that. It's gonna be called something else. But you'll know as my insiders what it's actually about. And you'll, you, so you're starting to understand the benefits of, of why it's important. So that brings us to a close. I'm so excited to have experienced this first hands-free Dharma Talk Tuesday with my amazing new lighting and tripod setup. Chandra, extra thanks to you for your note-taking on this call. And I look forward to seeing all of you next week, six o'clock Pacific, in the Dharma Talk Tuesday chair for Dharma Talk Tuesday. And if you have any other friends who would like to, who you think would benefit from this message, please share this if you haven't already, because that really does make a difference for so many people. Sending you sparkles and love. Thanks everyone.